My name is Dr. Patrick McGann, and this is a patient education video on arthroscopic meniscectomy. I am a board-certified orthopedic surgeon that practices in San Francisco, California. My specialty is sports medicine, including arthroscopic surgery of the knee and shoulder. This presentation will start with an introduction and will progress to a real patient case demonstrating arthroscopic footage from a real patient. The meniscus comes from the ancient Greek word meniskos, which means crescent. As described, the meniscus is crescent-shaped and composed of fibrocartilage. It functions to disperse the weight of the body, reduce intraarticular friction, and provide shock absorption. As a result, it plays a crucial role in the function of the knee. Its blood supply is from peripheral to central and decreases with age. This is why meniscus tears often do not heal because the meniscus does not have a good blood supply. The lateral meniscus and the medial meniscus have a different form and function. The medial meniscus is larger and more C-shaped. The lateral meniscus is smaller, more mobile, and more round. There are a variety of meniscal tears. This is relevant because it's only vertical longitudinal tears that are typically amenable to surgical repair. The other types of tears, including parrot beak tears, complex tears, horizontal tears, and radial tears, typically require removal rather than repair. There is also a bucket handle type tear, which depending on the duration of symptoms, can be either repaired or simply removed. Patients who report a meniscus tear often report a pop due to a twisting injury. However, many patients often present with chronic uh, joint line pain due to overuse activities such as running, crossfit, and high intensity exercise. Symptoms include pain, locking, and catching. On physical examination, patients typically have pain along the joint line as well as a variety of positive orthopedic tests such as the McMurray's test. In most cases, an MRI is performed in order to evaluate for a meniscus tear and any coexisting pathology. Many meniscus tears can be treated conservatively with standard rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Often, a cortisone injection is effective in relieving intraarticular inflammation. In addition, anti-inflammatories such as aspirin and ibuprofen can be helpful. However, many meniscus tears do not heal on their own. As a result, arthroscopic meniscus surgery is the most common orthopedic surgery performed. Most commonly, surgery consists of a partial meniscectomy where the damaged tissue is simply removed. In rare cases, the meniscus can actually be repaired. This depends on the type of repair and whether or not the tear has a good blood supply. It should be noted that a meniscus repair has a much longer recovery time and full recovery takes approximately six months. This is in contrast to a simple meniscectomy or removal, wherein full recovery often takes only six weeks. Like any procedure, meniscectomy does have risks, although the overall risks of surgery are small. It should be noted that potential risks include infection, stiffness, nerve injury, persistence of symptoms, and tear recurrence. However, taken together, the overall risk of surgery is less than 3%. In terms of recovery, arthroscopic meniscectomy is a same-day surgery. Patients come to the surgery center and leave on the same day. Surgery takes approximately one hour. Patients are asked to keep the dressing dry for the first three days. Following this, patients can remove the dressing, replace the dressing with band-aids, and they can shower within three days. Sutures are removed at one to two weeks. Physical therapy is started one week postoperatively. This is my standard physical therapy protocol for a partial meniscectomy. The first week, the emphasis is on pain and swelling control. At one to three weeks, I ask that patients attempt to regain their full range of motion. Once the wounds are sufficiently healed, patients can start using the bike, stationary bike, elliptical, as well as swim. 
At approximately six weeks, patients can begin jogging and resume high impact activity. Full recovery takes approximately six to 12 weeks. This is in contrast to the physical therapy timeline for a meniscal repair. For a standard meniscal repair, patients are asked to stay on crutches for approximately four to six weeks postoperatively. Running and agility exercises do not start until three months postoperatively, and full recovery can take as long as six months postoperatively. This is why an important discussion with your surgeon regarding whether or not you will undergo a meniscus removal versus repair is important prior to surgery. The following is arthroscopic footage from a real patient. As stated, arthroscopic meniscectomy is a procedure that's performed through two small incisions. Through one incision, I place a camera, and through the other incision, I place my instruments. This is a patient with a medial meniscus tear of a right knee. First, I was using a probe in order to probe the tear and to characterize the findings. Following this, I use a meniscal biter in order to remove the free ends of the tear. As you can see, the biter progresses along the tear to remove any loose edges. An analogy I like to use with my patients is that a meniscus tear is like having a pebble in your shoe. Any irregularity in the meniscus can cause extreme irritation in the joint. This is analogous to how a small pebble can feel very uncomfortable on the bottom of the foot. Once I use the meniscal biter to remove the torn portion of the meniscus, the next instrument I place in the joint is a shaver. The shaver is used to remove any meniscal fragments. In addition, the shaver can be used to remove any free meniscal edges that have not been removed with the biter. As you can see here, I'm running the meniscal shaver along the torn meniscus in order to smooth it out and remove any rough edges. Following removal of the torn meniscus, I will often place my probe back in the joint in order to further probe the meniscus. At the end of the surgery, I want to make sure that all torn meniscus has been removed and only smooth meniscus edges remain. In summary, arthroscopic meniscectomy is the most common orthopedic surgery performed. It is a safe, effective procedure. It is indicated for meniscal tears which have been unresponsive to conservative management. There are two main types of meniscus surgery, meniscus removal or meniscectomy, and the second is meniscal repair. Partial meniscectomy is by far the most common surgery and is indicated for large and complex tears. A meniscal repair is indicated for small vertical tears which have a good blood supply. Optimal recovery following meniscectomy requires active patient engagement.